what's up it's chris with va travels and i'm back down here in newport news and i came to visit the lee hall mansion and <clears throat> yeah it's part of this uh combination ticket deal i had bought uh, a couple months ago i had visited enview plantation which is about a mile and a half uh away and yeah, so you get to visit Enview, Lee Hall Mansion, and the Virginia War Museum. Uh, the accommodation tickets $21, uh, whereas ticket individually was $8 here. So sa save a little bit of money. And this is the home I uh, was built by Richard Decatur Lee. And real quick, I'll tell you, he's not part of the Lee line out of Stratford Hall. Uh, Robert E. Lee, Henry Lee, Richard Lee, Francis Lee. Uh, no direct relation to them, but anyway, I'll tell you, he purchased this land, 1850. Uh, house wasn't completed until 1859, and uh, had purchased uh, 500, I'm sorry, 452 acre track. And uh, let's see, it's uh, 12 rooms. Uh, it's actually 6,600 uh, square feet. And it was also the headquarters of uh, Joseph, Joseph Johnson uh, and John Magruder during the uh, Confederate generals uh, during the uh, Peninsula campaign. So, yeah, I'm going uh, yeah, to take a tour of this place. And just let, let you know it was built in an Italian Italianate style. And it seems in the 1850s, 1860s, that was the popular style of architecture. And once you go in, it's your basic uh, Georgian uh, floor plan. You're gonna have two rooms uh, on the left, two rooms on the right, and uh, same thing on the second floor. So, visitor's entrance. It's cool, they've got a couple of dependencies out here and there's a railroad track on the other side of that parking lot. Some artifacts, uh, old canteen, tin cup, a couple whiskey flasks down here, and that's actually a compass. Flintlock pistol, and here are some field glasses, aka binoculars. Vest worn by William Fitzhugh Payne. Pretty small guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Bowie knife. A couple uniform buttons. An identification disc. Uh, I guess their version of dog tags. Oh yeah, the. Confederates launched a hot air balloon for reconnaissance. Another one of those identification discs. Oh yeah, the ironclads, the Battle of Hampton Roads, the famous battle between the CSS Virginia and the USS Merrimack and here would be the uh, CSS Virginia and it had initially sank uh, two Union ships uh, offhand yeah the uh, USS Cumberland USS Congress and then later got in a battle with the monitor and uh, it, it ended in a stalemate but the Confederates were able to block the James River from Union access. Uh, 
another uniform. Uh, this one by Evander Wallace Sylvester of the 6th Main Infantry. Again, pretty small guy. Uh, Colt Revolver. And 44 caliber uh, gunmaker to the royal family. Huh. Looks like a cap here. Fifth New York Volunteer Infantry. A seven shot revolver. 32 caliber. Fort Monroe. And the, of course, Peninsula Campaign, like I say, uh, Magruder headquartered here. All right, I guess I'm gonna get a walk around the grounds. Anyway, so just took the house tour and pretty good. Um, no filming inside. Uh, the guy did let me take a couple pictures kind of in the hallway. Um, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of expensive furniture that had been donated and they kind of just didn't want that getting out there. Um, I did take also a, a quick little tour through the museum um, down in the basement. And now I'm going to walk the grounds and this would be the, the kitchen. And yeah, it's a pretty, uh, pretty good sized kitchen, uh, two stories. You, you didn't see that too often. And uh, yeah, as I've, I've said in many of my videos, uh, there's a good shot, the light hitting it. And yeah, it's definitely a, a pretty mansion. And yeah, kitchens uh, were built outdoors. They were hot, they were loud. Uh, you had the danger of fire. They were really busy. And as I said, uh, Richard only lived here about three years. Um, he was uh, forced to flee to Richmond during the war. Um, once he had returned, uh, the house was pretty much emptied out. It was ransacked by the Union Army. All the furniture, pretty much everything was gone. And he tried to start up a farm. Um, of course, he had no slaves. Things didn't work out. And around uh, 1870, the uh, whole place was, was sold. So. And just to let you know, this also it wasn't a plantation. Uh, I'm sorry, this wasn't a tobacco plantation, as you might expect. Um, they say uh, tobacco uh, had lost its value by the early 1800s, and so he pretty much grew uh, staple crops here: uh, wheat, corn, all that. And I'll also tell you, 38 uh, slaves lived here. and largest and most valuable estate in the county and they say he was the second richest man in the county and uh, he was a very successful planter he was known as a uh, scientific farmer and uh, he had mastered uh, the art of uh, just rotating crops so let's see um wow 72 beef cattle 35 sheep 130 hogs okay yeah scientific farmer And uh, yeah, after he had sold the property, uh, house fell into the hands of William Henry Aspinhall. He was a prominent attorney for the railroad, and he was the great uncle of Franklin D. Roosevelt. So, okay, kind of interesting. And then, I'll also tell you the house that after that fell into the hands of a guy named Robert Bigford, and he was an attorney for the Newport News. Uh, the Newport News shipyard and uh yeah a huge employer in the area and it currently is the largest manufacturer of nuclear powered aircraft carriers and submarines and yeah so he lived here in 1908 until 1924 and uh on a side note when he died the house was passed on to his secretary so some uh shenanigans going on 
and oh, I'll also throw out there um, at one point uh, a hot air balloon was released in the front yard uh, for reconnaissance by the Confederate Army. Let's see, and some earthworks up here. And there was actually a skirmish that took place uh, on the grounds uh, May 4th, 1862. And what had happened is the day prior, a uh, Union Army had penetrated the Yorktown Warwick line just a, uh, about two and, a two and a half miles ahead uh, up by his grist mill, uh, Lee Mill. Uh, they had marched down the Warwick Road, which is now, it's either Route or Interstate 64, it's the, the same road. Uh, they were marching down, Confederate Army uh, began retreating, but they had left some men behind just to kind of cover the retreat. Uh, Union Army had sent cavalry ahead, uh, and the cavalry had gotten a clash with the remaining men. And the cavalry were initially pushed off. Uh, the Confederate soldiers were better armed, uh, carrying rifles, uh, whereas the cavalry just had uh, pistols, uh, sabers. Uh, but eventually Union Army sent a uh, flanking party around. Um, pushing the soldiers back to uh, to join up with the uh, fleeing Confederates. So. And if you do come down here to Newport News, there is a lot of history. Um, as I had said, there's the Enview Plantation, which is just about a mile and a half away. There's the Virginia War Museum. Uh, there's a Mariner Museum with the, uh, they've got the actual turret of the USS Monitor. I believe they dredged that, they found that off the coast of North Carolina. Uh, and it's got a replica of the ship that you can walk on, which I hear is pretty cool. Um, there's the James Field House. Uh, James Fields house and uh, he was a prominent black attorney early 1900s he was a Virginia delegate and they've got some sort of World War one uh, city walk now, I don't know too much about it I'm, I'm gonna look more into it but um yeah apparently this is one of the big launching off points uh, for when the uh, US had left to uh, to join the uh, fighting over in Europe and this goes over slavery uh, let's see, he inherited seven male slaves, 1844, and by 1860, he owned 38 slaves. Uh, they ranged the ages 65 years old to two months old. So, all right, so that's it for Lee Hall Mansion. And to let you know, in the next couple weeks, I'm taking a trip down to Tennessee, and uh, I'm going to stop at a couple places out there finally in southwestern Virginia. And next weekend, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'll uh, probably just hit something local in, in the uh, Fredericksburg area. So anyway, yeah, see you on the next one.